The tripods were a form of advanced alien technology featured within the uh, War of the Worlds universe. For the sake of this video, I'll be considering the 2005 movie universe as the base canon for the franchise. However, relevant information that pops out about the Martians or their tripod technology in other depictions that don't clash with this established canon, I will try and include and integrate because there is no reason why we shouldn't try and do that. The Martian tripods were also known as the fighting machines and were developed as an almost biomechanical mecha weapon used by the Martian alien race, obviously who hail from the planet Mars. This technology appears to be a accumulation of the race's most advanced technologies. We see things that are like death rays that are able to vaporize organic organisms almost instantly, advanced energy shielding capabilities, long versatile and very powerful mechanical limbs and tentacles that have very flexible and maneuverable components, mechanical, biomechanical sections, etc. The tripods have been coined the nickname for a very obvious reason. The advanced machines of death are housed upon a very large and powerful set of three mechanical legs. The tripod itself appears to have a roundabout appearance of the Martians themselves, which is not unusual due to the fact that when humans build robots and mecha suits, they generally try and model them after our own image as well. They possess three legs that eventually branch down into three smaller toe pads. Now, in the 2005 film, it is not specifically stated whether the alien race originates from Mars, uh, as it states in H.G. Wells' novel that they are in fact from Mars, however that is not confirmed in the film. Despite this, I would believe that they, even if they don't originally, uh, didn't originally evolve on Mars, they would have at least lived there for a very long time after leaving another distant planet to colonise Mars. Maybe there was a civilization already on Mars similar to how it was on Earth, and they simply did the same thing they did here, terraforming the planet to meet their needs. However, the creation of the tripods machines most likely took place on Mars, as it was one of the closest stellar neighbors to us, and is very practical if the Martians wanted to quickly place them on Earth, and again, this is highly subjective as it was explained that the Martians have been planning this invasion for years, uh, for like thousands and thousands of years, and potentially placing the tripods there millennia ago, and waiting until the population of humans and other hemoglobin carrying organisms had grown to a substantial amount or number on the surface of the world. The tripod is outfitted with two heat ray particle accelerators that are able to direct a focused beam of intense high energy at a victim and vaporize their body and organic tissue in under a second. The colossal, mach the colossal machines stand at around 50 meters tall at their peak but can move to be almost touching the ground uh, through the manipulation of their highly flexible advanced set of legs which appear to be constructed out of some sort of polymerized metal that allows the tripod legs to have the strength of steel and the malleability of a polymer. In addition to these legs, they have 18 other tentacle-like limbs that they have different uh, purposes for, such as reaching down and grasping and capturing a victim, which can then be deposited in one of two cage-like compartments on the exterior side of the top of the head-like structure. The other type of tentacle is a blood draining pipe that can be used to stab into a human and suck them dry of their blood. Another takes the form of a probe that consists of a highly extendable tentacle that is extremely malleable and has a camera attached to the end of it. This is used to explore smaller and tighter areas and hard to reach places that the tripod cannot go itself and can even be used to recon prior to when the Martians leave their ship and explore an area on foot. All of these appendages seem to be very organic and biological in their nature, not exactly behaving like a biological organism or like a mechanical machine, but more of an in-between state. The head unit of the tripod also houses an array of flood and searchlights, 
used to investigate and seek out humans in its environment in order, in order to harvest or destroy them. The lights can be switched on or off depending on the situation. If the tripod finds itself in the day, they remain off, and in the night they can either have them constantly on or switched off, slowly creeping up on a group of humans and only activating the lights when they choose when they are already too close to make an escape. Now, the tripods were also equipped with a form of teleportation technology. As the Martians do not physically climb down into the buried ships once they begin their attack on Earth. Instead, the Martians utilize some sort of teleportation that disrupts the local environment weather, the local environment's weather, creating a large electrical storm which at its center shoots presumably an electrical message or some sort of advanced information down into the tripod where it is then interpreted and the creatures are materialized within their death craft. They are able to pilot and control these craft from within the large head-like structure that sits upon the uh, legs of the tripod and where all the other tentacles are attached. The head also houses its own set of cameras uh, mounts at the front used to observe its surroundings and maneuver its environment accordingly. The head as previously stated has two cages on the back in order to store humans ready to be moved into the head via a powerful organic muscular like tissue implanted within the head structure and is used in order to move humans into the head's interior where they can be restrained and have the entirety of their blood extracted by an array of horrific and violent probes. The tripod has an advanced energy shielding system which also allows it to be almost impervious to any kinds of traditional ballistics weapons fire, even missiles, RPGs and grenade explosive rounds. It is likely that some sort of high energy blast such as a nuclear payload would be able to overcome these energy shields, however without proper knowledge of what, how, what actually powers them and how they function, it would be hard to say. The tripod also had the ability to emit a very loud and quite fearsome sound from the head unit. However, despite its terrible inclinations for a human population, it is not certain or explained what its purpose is. The horn-like sound could possibly be to, to instill fear in a population of humans, to create chaos and panic like that, which the tripod could then take advantage of whilst harvesting as many disorganised human individuals as possible. It could also be some sort of communication between the separate tripod units. The sound clocking in at around 113 Hz sits between A2 and A-2 on the musical scale and lasts generally for around 3 seconds which can sometimes be accompanied by a second 136 Hz blast at the C- minor range. It is possible that they are some form of data and information transmission between different tripods, giving updates to each other about the tripod's positions, integrity, and where large pockets of humans are, etc, etc. This communication hypothesis is supported by the fact that during the film, when the alien tripods leave their tripods to explore a house, when the sound signal uh, flares, they have a swift and immediate retreat back into the fighting machine almost like it was some sort of message. The tripods were manufactured by the Martian alien race really for uh, three main functions. One was to protect them against the human race, uh, human race's attempts to resist them once the tripods arose from the ground. The second was uh, to be used as a weapon, and three was, was basically to be a harvesting unit for the human race, and specifically the blood that we hold within our circulatory systems. The tripods were placed for many thousands of years uh, under the surface of the earth, and it could very well have been much longer than just thousands of years, and could have even been millions, but without a proper timeline we don't exactly know. 
The Martians tra transported these machines there and buried them deep underground to conceal their existence from a rapidly developing human race. They did this because they saw that uh, they saw that a hemoglobin carrying creature would eventually rise to dominance over Earth, and eventually the population explosion that would happen within this pop within this species would allow them to harvest it all and use it to terraform the planet. After waiting countless millennia, the alien race decided humans had reached a peak population size fit for harvest. The Martians now beamed themselves themselves across the stars from a particular planet or parked themselves in a spacecraft in orbit around the earth which they then beamed down into their buried vessels and once aboard they began to fire up their death machines slowly dig them out of their ancient tombs and once testing their systems begin to lay waste to the human population instilling fear and panic before they begin the destruction and harvesting procedures the complete terror and horrific nature of the tripods is summed up in one quote from the series. Once the tripods start to move, no more news comes out of that area. Once the tripods are active and begin to capture humans, they drop them in two sets of cages in the back of the head unit. Here the humans are collected and await harvest. Every now and then a metal iris at the head unit just above the cage of humans opens to reveal a strangely organic hole that appears to be some sort of fleshy orifice. Seconds after, a long and very powerful tentacle emerges from the orifice and reaches down into the cage. The tentacle will select a human at random and quickly acts to pull them into the head where the victim is, through an unknown means, completely drained of blood. The blood is collected and then sprayed out of the head unit of the tripod to be used as human fertilizer for a type of terraforming red weed that is presumably able to transform a planet into the correct conditions for the Martians to survive, which would allow them to colonize Earth. The weed's origins is unknown, however it is likely some sort of spore-like microbial organism that the tripods have been, uh, that the tripods spray out. This could possibly be the black gas-like substance that they are seen spraying when they first emerge from the ground. While this is not confirmed, it is probably the most likely explanation to what this gas is. However, there could also be a few other explanations as we the viewers are not made uh, explicitly aware of this. This harvest process is repeated every few minutes and ensures a substantial amount of feed is provided to their weeds. This process also presents a major weakness for the tripod though. In the film, a man was scooped up by the tripod and carried with him a collection of grenades, working together with a whole bunch of humans in order to hold onto him and resisting the pull of the powerful tentacle to whisk him into the machine, they are collectively able to implant the live grenades into the interior of the fighting machine and pull the man out of the tentacle's grasp. This, this results in a massive explosion within the tripod that leads to a catastrophic failure of all systems. And really was the only way to take uh, out the operations of a tripod fully. And whilst it was possible, it was extremely difficult and highly dangerous to attempt to perform. This is basically the uh, completion of the knowledge we have of the tripod monstrosities from featured in the many War of the Worlds uh, adaptations. But what did you guys think? What did you like most about this video? Do you have any questions? And what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content, the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. This is Project Acheron, signing off.